Hey y'all, welcome back to Cloud Shadow TV. I'm Jesse. These are all the books that I read last year, and this is my second take, so my hands are getting tired. Um, but I did a video where I talked about all the sci-fi ones, and now we're going to talk about the rest, so let me put these six sci-fi books down. So last year I read 12 books. Now I know that for some people this is like how many books you read in one month, but for me that was huge. That's the most books I've ever read in a year. I set out on the goal to read one book a month, and I accomplished it. So, for 2023, my goal is to read 15 books. So far, I've started the Saturday Night Ghost Club, which is my first book of the year. But let's go back in time to 2022 and talk about the six books that I read that were not sci-fi. So, I did a previous video where I talked about the six sci-fi books that I read. And now I'm going to talk about the six other books that I read. Which, by the way, that was not on purpose. I accidentally or just like happen to read six sci-fi books and six not sci-fi books. So here we are. All right, so technically you could call this one a sci-fi book, um, but it's not alien based and that is really what my other video was about. It's for my alien abduction support group part of my channel. But anyways, first I'm gonna talk about Before the Coffee Gets Cold. Now, first of all, can we talk about this beautiful cover? I mean, wow, the texture, it is just these lovely colors. It's like calming to look at. Look, it matches my nails. Ooh, look at that. I didn't even do that on purpose. So this book is a pretty quick read. It's 213 pages. It's written by Tochikazu Kawaguchi. Now I'm probably butchering that pronunciation, um, but he is a Japanese writer. And this book is just, uh, how do I describe it? It's about a time machine situation, but not your average time machine. Um, it's a time machine with a lot of very like certain rules that dictate what you can and can't do, how long you can be back in time, you have to come back before the coffee gets cold, you have to sit in a certain spot in this diner, and like there's these whole uh, like list of rules you have to follow and or else there's consequences um but through this device of the time machine we learn some really touching stories of the people who frequent this coffee shop and the message in it is really beautiful um it's well written the characters are interesting it's very dialogue heavy and definitely character based but there's different uh like sections and each one goes through a little short story about a different person, but they all tie together in the end. So I really enjoyed reading this book. It's definitely something I would recommend to someone who is interested in literature from other countries. This might be a good one to start with. It is sci-fi in that the time machine device is used, but overall it has more of a like realist tone to it. Uh, it doesn't feel like you're in another world. It definitely feels like you're in this world just with like a little surreal twist. So yeah, check out Before the Coffee Gets Cold. Next up, uh, I'm a little nervous to talk about this one. We have Verity by Colleen Hoover. Now I know, book talk, booktube, Everyone loves Colleen Hoover and like I'm this is the book where people are gonna probably disagree with me the most But I was so engaged with this book. Okay. I think Colleen Hoover is a great writer I was reading this book like this like oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh Every chapter ends and you want to know what happens next and like that is really great but the freaking ending like I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but That is how I feel that is how I felt when I read the last freaking chapter of this book. I was like, you wasted so much of my time because this chapter just ruins everything. It just ruins everything. So that's how I feel about Verity. Next up, I read If I Had Your Face by Frances Cha. If I Had Your Face is a really interesting book. It follows four girls who live in a big city in Korea and they all live in the same like apartment complex but they live very different lives. And so you follow kind of their different journeys, how they got there, um, what they're going through. 
There's a lot about beauty standards, what it means to be a woman in modern Korea, and it's really, really fascinating. There's a whole plot line about how one of the characters is like super obsessed with a K-pop star, and uh, I've never seen a book do that where it's not fan fiction. And this is a light spoiler. Things with the K-pop star overlap with her life and it's a pretty realistic how it all goes down instead of being like a fantastical fan fiction situation. But what I really liked about this book was I really felt like I was like transported to Korea and like got to kind of understand more what it's like to be a young woman around my age growing up there. Not growing up, I guess I'm grown up, but you know what I mean. But yeah, Frances Cha's writing style is also very like interesting. While it's not very colorful, I still have like strong images I formed in my mind while reading it that I can like close my eyes and imagine and be back in the story. So um, I really enjoyed it. I got my book a little dirty. This is another one, my real copy that I read. So yeah, If I Had Your Face by Frances Cha. Next up, another popular book talk booktube book, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Overall, I enjoyed reading this book. I Again, it's kind of a page turner. You want to know what's going to happen. Um, I like the style of like creating a fake celebrity and doing like a journalism story on them. I think that is a very fun way to get into the world where it feels very real but you know it's all fantastical. One of the main twists, so I would say the first main twist is lovely, beautiful, beautifully done, 10 out of 10, mwah, gorgeous, beautiful, amazing, we stand. The second twist, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I guess the second and a half twist, because the first part of it was like, okay, I saw it coming, but yeah, that makes this all make sense. But then like the deeper meaning to it all, I, th I feel like there could just could have been a little bit more thought in that part maybe. But overall, I enjoyed reading this book. I thought it was very well written, a, very, a really fun story. I'm interested in reading other books by Taylor Jenkins Reid, um, but this is the only one that I have read so far. So uh, maybe suggest another one of her books to me in the comments that you think that I should read. Okay, so next up we have The Night Circus. Now this book has a very close place to my heart. This is the first book that I read in 2022. Um, I would definitely credit this book with getting me back into reading as much as I have this year. This book, I say I'm a screenwriter and like for me this book is a master class in atmosphere like the world building in this book is so good <sighs> like I've never felt more in a world than I did while reading the night circus this book has inspired me in ways like I can't even tell you it is so so good um as a writer I think this is a must read it is as a reader I think you should, like if you want to enjoy your time you should definitely read it it is just like a it's a piece of magic like that is how I feel about the night circus I don't know if I've had the same feeling like since reading Harry Potter as a child that is how highly I praise the night circus such a good book 10 out of 10 this one and earthlings from my sci-fi video they're very different books but those are my two favorites that I read last year and this one, though, might be like my number one all-time favorite book. It's really good. It's really, really, really good. Oh, and I don't even think I said who it's by. The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. If you're not going to read any book except for one on either of my videos, read The Night Circus. Finally, we have the last book that I read last year, and this one is definitely a different mood than all of the other books that I read, really. My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This book is not an easy read. Read the trigger warnings before you pick up this book. Trigger warning. Big trigger warning here. If you 
don't want to hear about SA, then do not watch the rest of this video. My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell is almost in partnership with Lolita. It's about a young girl who is groomed and assaulted by her teacher in high school. And it's a hard read. I wouldn't say that I enjoyed reading it, but it's a really well written book. I learned a lot from reading it. If you, if someone in your life has gone through a similar situation, it might be something to think about reading because it gives you a really great perspective on the girl's point of view and like how difficult and how like confusing it is when you are groomed to think that this person loves you and that you love them. Um, the story follows her from a young girl into adulthood when um, like the Me Too movement and everything is happening and she really has to face what happened to her. So this one is one where it's like I do not recommend this to everyone but if it is something you want to learn about more or you're interested in then it is a really well written book and uh, you'll cry a bunch and some parts are really hard to get through but it's really well written and it is a good book so that is the final book that I read in 2022 so thank you so much for watching I appreciate every single view make sure you like subscribe in the comments let me know what were your favorite books you read in 2022 any suggested reading for 2023 for me yeah make sure you like and subscribe if you want to go check out my sci-fi books episode I'm Jesse. this is my co-host Alan. This has been Cloud Shadow TV and we'll see you next time. Peace out Earthlings.